What's up, everybody? My name is Kyle Daniels, a.k.a. Kyle the Pixel Prince, a.k.a. Big Bumpin', a.k.a. Kyle the Awesomely Amazing Full King Ferdinand Jr. Cortez Butchie Kuro Tutan Flabbergasted Dingy. The third. And welcome to the 100 subscriber special. The 100 subscriber special. Holy shit. Like, damn. Y'all, like, y'all took my expectations and just freaking blew them out of the water. I was expecting us to, like, flat line at like maybe 101 but 103 or something like that and right now as it stands we are actually almost at a hundred and well actually right now we're at 140 so we're almost to 150 yeah but it is insane uh so on today's thing we're going to be talking about like we're going to be going behind the scenes of some of the animations that you've seen on the channel including the zelda animation and then, of course, Wapa, the George Lopez parody. Both of these animations are um, animations that came out this year. And I kind of wanted to delve into how they were made and kind of pick them apart a little bit. But before we get into that, I wanted to take this time in the beginning uh, to personally thank everybody that has just been a part of this channel. Like, if you're brand new to this channel, uh, no matter what you're here for or, or what brought you here, thank you for being here. Hopefully you're here watching this video as well so you can get a little bit of uh, insight on, you know, as to how I made these and stuff like that. So it's it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's really surreal. Um, and I'm just, I'm just super happy. Thank you all to everybody. Like, I, I'm honestly at really, like, right now at a loss of words for, like, how to even begin addressing it. But I just wanted to say thank you not only to the people on YouTube, um, who left amazing comments and viewed it, but um, also on Newgrounds, you know, I was brand new to Newgrounds, and my god, the reception I received on there was just, it's unbelievable, like, in two days, uh, we actually managed to surpass the amount of views we had on YouTube in five to six months, which is just, that is, that's freaking crazy, because I was like, oh man, I was posted on here, whatever, I wound up getting featured, PBots daily, I don't even know who that is, or what it is, um, and just so like an out, just an outbreak of a uh, outbreak of comments. Honestly, it was just insane. And I really wish I, I, res I, I wanted to respond to everybody. I, I did, but I just, honestly, there was, it got too much. I started to get anxiety. Like I need to answer everybody, but I, I couldn't. So if I didn't answer you, but you left an awesome comment, just know that maybe I might've scrolled past it. And I just kind of like, I had nothing else to say. Like I was just, just, I was just happy, you know, that everybody really, acknowledged it and I'm gonna be honest for a majority of 2020 I kind of felt a little irrelevant you know I was really trying to kind of push content out and and I know like you know let's plays aren't the most creative thing in the world but I did put a lot of work into them um, you know I put a lot of myself in, and stuff like that and I was putting a lot of time in the editing you know before editing used to take me like 30 minutes or so but now it takes me sometimes a couple hours depending on how intricate some of the edits are so you know seeing some of those videos actually now kind of getting up into the higher views makes me feel a little bit better. And, uh, you know, honestly, after the reception that this video, the Zelda video has gotten, it's just, it, it just shows me that all the doubt that I had in my mind was probably just burnout. It was probably just the pandemic and depression or whatever you want to call it all kind of bundled in together. And, uh, yeah, I think I'm over it. You know, I think I'm honestly ready to kind of keep pushing forward and, uh, branching out. And hopefully, uh, even though you all came for the animation, hopefully you stay for the content that we provide outside of that because animation isn't the only thing we do and we're hoping to kind of expand that as we kind of move on through uh through this channel's lifeline you know so yeah once again thank you all for being here all right i'm gonna drop it now before i keep going on enough of the sappy stuff let's actually get into why you're all here today and that is the behind the scenes slash making of these two videos now i don't know how many of you out there know but uh my brain is a little dumb it's pretty stupid so <laughs> we're actually going to be bringing up an itinerary so I have a list of things because I, I tend I tend to go off the handle a little bit I tend to I tend to uh, schmooze so let's go ahead and run down everything on our list and uh, this will probably be the last bit of camera footage you see until the very end of me so uh, yeah. well hope you're all strapped in because we've got a bit of a girthy boy on our hands so time to go over the list. On today's itinerary, we'll be talking about some FAQs, that's frequently asked questions for the acronymly, the ac ac acronymly, acronymly chat? For people that don't understand acronyms, whatever, okay? And then, and then we're gonna be diving straight into the process, which consists of planning, storyboarding, animation, cleanup, editing, sound, and then at the end, I'd kind of like to talk a little bit about future goals for the channel, ways we can possibly get there, and uh, maybe some future content to look out for. 
Uh, so with all that being said, let's actually get started. Okay. <clears throat> so first we're going to go through some, you know, facts or f whatever. First question, is the Zelda game available? And if so, where? The answer is no and nowhere because it isn't. It's not a real game, unfortunately. And even if it was, Nintendo would strike me down with the force and might of God. So absolutely not. No, this video was actually made by layering pixel animations or sprites, as they're commonly known in the game design world, pixel backgrounds, objects, and effects in a video editor. Essentially what I did was I stitched them together and keyframed them to give them the illusion of movement in the video editor. Which, in hindsight, after looking at this, and this is an actual image of my, uh, of my timeline in, in Adobe Premiere, uh, it, it honestly probably would have been easier to program it. A little late for that, I guess. Next question, and initially this question wasn't actually in the video, but I have gotten so many freaking comments about it that I just, I had to jump in there and put in my two cents. So, why does Link have a beard? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Heaven forbid an artist, like myself, take any kind of creative freedoms or liberties with a series like The Legend of Zelda. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. You know, some people actually appreciated the beard, and most people didn't. Now, I, I, I agree that, you know, if we're keeping everything as close to the original as possible, but I feel like people get really upset about the beard, and it makes no sense to me. I mean, in the end, Link was only bearded for, like, a small fraction of the entirety of the video. Like, he wasn't even, like, most of the video, Link did not have a beard, and everybody seemed to have such an issue with it. Although I bought a book specifically for me to have references to how the enemies and some of the environments looked, I actually wound up utilizing a lot of the ones I found online from another artist whose name I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll drop it right here, right now. And he was more of the frame for what I wanted everything to kind of look. I wanted it to look dreary and dark, especially in the beginning, and I wound up lightening it up a little bit, uh, especially when the gameplay hit, because I was like, dude, this is supposed to be epic, you know? It's supposed to be green fields, lush grass, all that other crap. So ultimately, I wound up utilizing that sort of version of Link, and in that one, he looked a lot more rugged. He looked like, yeah, he looked like a fairy boy, but he looked like he could actually grow some, you know, some facial hair. He looked rugged. He looked like an adventurer, and I was like, you know what? It would be cool to see him with a beard. Beards are cool. So, yeah, that's where the beard came from. I know, like I said, a lot of people don't like it, but, uh, hey, if you don't like it, you could always play the original, and, uh, yeah, because I'm kind I just, I am kind of sick of hearing comments about the beards, good or bad. So, from this point on, if you want to make a comment about the beard, whether it's good or bad, just know that I do not care and I am not going to look at it. In fact, I actually turned comments off because they started to upset me. They started specifically to upset me when uh, they would invade my game. Say, for instance, I was playing a multiplayer game, which I'm already not very good at, getting my butt kicked, handed to me, and, you know, tossed around the field, and then all of a sudden, in the bottom right corner of my screen, as I'm getting my ass spanked, I just get a comment saying, yeah, this is good and all, but Link shouldn't have a beard. He's 16. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Shut up. Shut up. Go away. Leave me alone, bullies. Anyway, we're going to be moving on to the next question. That's the last of the beard talk for now. Anyway, I'm sure we will uh, dive into that later when I talk about the future plans for the channel. And yes, the bearded Link is part of that. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not sorry. Next question. How long did these videos take me to make? The Zelda video took me about 11 months, and the George Lopez video took me two to three months to complete. I started the Zelda video, like I said, back in 2018, and after the first quarter of 2020, I started to burn out from the high volume of videos I was producing, kind of without any interaction, obviously. And uh, I kind of wanted to return to something that I thought was going to make more our channel more relevant. Uh, so I not only at that point did I start, you know, go back to the idea, but I actually did a 180 on the art style as well. If you look at these two examples right here, these are what the art style looked like before and what the art style looked after I had done it. Uh, the original style was much more chibi, which would have worked if it was more for the game like A Link to the Past or even the first one, uh, but since Zelda 2 style was more, air quotes, realistic <laughs> and uh, stuff like that, I pretty much had to start from scratch, which was okay because I didn't have that much anyway. Funny enough, after finishing the video and posting it, I told myself I was going to take a hiatus to recover from the strain I put on myself to finish it. Uh, and instead, I wound up learning Blender in a week, making, rigging, and animating a character, which is this little dude right here, making an environment for my Twitch stream, which is this one right here. Uh, I'll link that below. <laughs> my Twitch, I mean. <laughs> Pun intended. 
And uh, then I decided to kind of push it a little bit further by adding more objects, which eventually became the basis for the bedroom in the George Lopez video. After a style test sometime in March, I think, uh, my artist brain wouldn't leave me alone. It said, you need to finish this. Uh, so I spent the next few months ensuring it would see completion before the end of the year. And look at that. Still, still had a little less than seven months left. Heck yeah. All right, final question. What programs did I use to create these videos? Quite a few, actually, uh, for Zelda 2 and only about three for Wapa. Uh, when I started my Zelda animation back in 2018, I would normally start my base in... <laughs> And, uh, and don't laugh when I say this, but uh, Microsoft Paint. This was just to get the character made and colors picked. Plus, this program is one I grew up with and kind of knew like the back of my hand, which, uh, after looking at it, is surprisingly dry and could probably use some lotion. Not to mention, I find it easier to start making art on Paint's blank canvas because it's simple, the UI doesn't make me want to die, like the next program I'm going to talk about, and I'm sure I'll get a lot of backlash for saying this, but graphic scale. Uh, this was the program I would animate my paint sprites in. Main reason for this was because it was free, it had layers, and paint couldn't animate. And I don't mean to bash on graphic scale. It's a really great free pixel art tool. Um, however, the one thing that it was lacking in, which was the biggest area for me, uh, was exporting. Hell, you might still see some of the remnants from graphic scale lying around in the video if you look hard enough. <coughs> cough, cough. Uh, and honestly, that's partially why our opening for our video has that weird, like, fade from when the chest opens because that's its version of exporting it as like a gif or I don't even know. Next up I used a sprite which uh, wound up replacing both paint and graphic scale. Now honestly I'm gonna be honest I could speak for hours about how amazing this program is uh, but instead I'll kind of give you the highlights. Clean UI with choice of themes, color palette editor with lots of flexibility and pre-made color palettes, layers, effects, a simple and clean timeline. <laughs> AI generated rotation tool, brush stabilizer, tile editor, and most importantly, an amazing exporter. I mean, obviously there's a lot of other things this program does right. Uh, unfortunately though, I'm not sponsored, <laughs> uh, but uh, I could be. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anyway, I uh, actually wound up accumulating over 675 hours in this program. Uh, and even when you take off an entire 24 hours of me just leaving my PC idle, this still translates to around 27 days of non-stop pixel arting. Definitely sure that I took at least three to five years off my life, but it was worth it, I think. I also utilized some other programs to assist me with some of the effects seen in the video. First off, we have Juice FX. This program allows you to drop in a pixelated image or a non-pixelated image, depending on what you're doing, uh, within certain dimensions, unless, of course, there's been an update uh, that I don't know about and apply preset effects that warp the images. The best and I think only example of this was the water on the world map. I had the water as a still sprite. What I did was I separated it from the surrounding area. And I set it on its own later, deleted it from the original so that when I export it, the water will still be transparent. I then dropped it in, applied the effect, and then I saved the altered juice effects version, dropped it in the layer below the world map in the video editor and voila, water. Uh, next, I used the program Pixel Effects Designer. I'm gonna be honest, this program is, is pretty cool, you know, for making effects when you when you know what you're doing. Fortunately for me, I don't, and I wound up making a bunch of animations that I told myself I'd use in other projects. This program, it has a lot of knobs and buttons, um, levers, you know, whatever. It, it's, it's very trial and error. There's almost no forum that I've seen anywhere uh, for it to ask for help. And to be honest, there's only like five or six tutorials on how to make certain things, and even those are outdated because with the version updates, all the buttons get moved and makes making things a little bit harder. You know, creating anything predetermined anyway. I will still say though, this program did save me a lot of time and is responsible for the blade beam Link uses and the ball of magic in front of the old man. Lastly, I used Adobe Premiere to assemble all the pixel images and animations to create what you see in the video. As for Wapa, I used a sprite again, and this time I used Blender to create the environment. Afterwards, I was once again dropping them into Premiere. And for those that don't know, by the way, Blender is an amazing 3D program that I thought was lousy for a majority of my life because of the amount of scorn and ridicule I received from people who aren't artists, by the way, let alone 3D modelers, uh, told me. And I suppose that, you know, should have been my red flag there, but uh, yeah, this program is amazing, not only allowing you to model and animate 3D, uh, but also 2D as well. Has a nice note editor, which is great if you know how to use it, unlike me, once again. And even allows you to sculpt, which is something you'd have to have ZBrush or some other program to do. And a license for ZBrush alone is, uh, it's, it's, mm -hmm, yeah, it is. Uh, and this program is free and has plenty of support, tutorials for the average beginner, and I'm pretty sure that's, that's all the programs I used. So, uh, yeah, I'd say it's time to move on. All right, it's time for the process, y'all. So, where do we begin? 
Well, for me, it all starts with an idea. When making an animation, an idea is necessary to the creation. Uh, but the question really is, how do these ideas come forward? Uh, what did I do to have them? Well, believe it or not, most of the time, nothing. Sometimes I'll be lying in bed or sitting on the toilet, and then all of a sudden, there it is. It could be while I'm, I don't know, standing at work or you know, saying something in my head, I just have to say out loud, but nine times out of 10, it comes from inspiration. And uh, what better way to come up with ideas for my animation than to watch other people's? Uh, for example, my Zelda video. I took a huge chunk of my inspiration from Simon Anderson and his amazing Chrono Break mock-up, which if you don't know, I'm a huge Chrono Trigger fan, and his mock-up blew me away so much that I actually had to do something similar. I'll go ahead and link it down below, uh, but yeah, no, it blew my mind. It was, it was crazy good. And to be honest with you all, I don't know why I chose Zelda 2. Uh, I'm, I'm not even like a big fan of this game. I, I've never actually liked it. I kind of just wanted to do it because, uh, you know, I never really saw any crazy attempts at there being a remake of this game, um, at least not anything as ambitious as what I was wanting to do, and that's not to demote other creators that have done other things with Zelda 2 on YouTube, uh, but I wanted something more in line with the traditional Zelda style of pixel graphics, and uh, kind of being more than just a randomizer or a recolored version of the exact same game. Uh, not to mention, I kind of wanted to create a version of the game that I would want to play and that was a little bit more approachable, uh, especially for newer fans of the series. For the George Lopez video, aka Wapa, I took a bunch of uh, inspiration from James Wan in the many horror movies he's created, Meat Canyon for his awesome horror parodies, and just to put my own twist, I did the pixel style overlaying the 3D, which was heavily inspired by the amazing world of Gumball and the way the style of the show is sort of a hybrid or mishmash of different mediums and manages somehow to make them all work. Of course, once you have these ideas, the big question is where do you go from there? Uh, well, in normal cases, it'd be written, but considering I was doing all the art, already had the idea, and there wasn't any planned dialogue, I kind of just skipped straight to the next phase, which is storyboarding. Storyboarding is a crucial step to the animation process, and in case you don't speak animator, it's essentially a comic book version of the animation. It lays the foundation for the animators to have a visual guide to go off of, and helps to set the tone and dictate the action and order of events. When I do my storyboards personally, I draw little thumbnails to help guide me. They start off pretty clean, and then they get to look like this as I progress, but the good thing about it is at least I know what they mean. These thumbnails generally have a separate box of text below the illustration to assist me in knowing what I had in mind because I don't always remember what I wanted for a certain scene and my brain is dumb. These text boxes generally say things like camera pans down to the character or fade from black, Link riding a pona, trees in background looping, and then fade to black again. Now, even though I plan out the entirety of my animations in these storyboards, I do sometimes deviate and add a lot more than I previously planned, uh, which is probably why Zelda took me so long, or I might take an entire segment or scene out if it's too difficult or doesn't really fit slash matter. Uh, for example, I was planning on adding more to the horse head scene where you fight him after hitting him with a chandelier, and it was gonna turn into sort of like an Eggman style type battle, uh, but I kind of felt it was unnecessary and would have taken me too long to do. Either way, uh, to me, the storyboard is really just a suggestion, uh, but it is still very crucial to ensuring that I can actually complete a project because if I didn't have a storyboard, I'd probably still be adding stuff to the animation. Once I have the storyboard created, or even partially created in some cases, I'll actually dive into the animation process immediately. I generally start in a sprite with a canvas of 480 by 270, which when multiplied by 4 equals 1920 by 1080, cause math. I start with the size because pixel art is generally small, and if I want to try and fill an entire 1920 by 1080 canvas with a pixel art environment, it would it would take me significantly longer, and uh, that's no for me, dog. Here's a shot of Link for comparison. This is how small he would actually be if I worked at the final resolution. Now look at all that space I'd have to fill up. Yeah, how about we bring back that 480 by 270? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that's much better. So I generally start with segmenting the character by head, body, arms, legs, and accessories. For Link, it would be his sword and shield. From this point, I would make his animations by altering the parts of his body. And once I'm happy with the final product, I export the animation as a GIF at four times the size and drop it into Premiere. This was generally the approach I took to creating anything, whether it was characters or environmental effects, such as the chain and the horse head scene which is exactly the scene I want to do a breakdown of. Now this scene is, it was very, very complicated and had a lot of moving parts. In fact, this one specifically took me the longest to get through. I first started the scene by dropping in Link for reference for how big everything needed to be. From this point, I began making the environment which consisted of several layers. The ground, the pillars, the middle ground with the spotlight, and then the background. In the case of this scene, I knew the environment would be scrolling since it's a chase scene, so although I kept the height at 270, the width had changed in order to give Link enough time to move and feel like he was actually being chased by the flail. From this point, I knew that Horsehead would destroy the pillars with his flail, and since he was in the middle and the number of pillars was even, I decided to do a half and half. 
So I took the pillar into a separate file and animated the pillar being destroyed. I also made a non-destroyed version just in case. I then made several variations of the pillar layer with all the pillars present, with two pillars present, and then one pillar remaining so I could swap out the layer to reflect when each pillar was destroyed. I then added the chandelier onto a separate layer and animated the chain when it gets hit, and then the chandelier when it comes loose and hits horsehead. These were separate objects and had to be animated in a separate layer so I could control when the animations happen. After all was said and done, I added Horsehead in, which is the only character that I spent more time on than Link, and he didn't have nearly as much screen time as any other enemies that took me no time at all. Worst part was, I made him too tall, so I had to downsize him in Premiere. Animating was fun though, I kind of started out with a simple block out for where I wanted his arms to be after cleaning up. I added the chain and then dropped him in. I made the flail ball a separate object so I can control it in Premiere, and after keyframing all the movement of everything, which took forever because my computer honestly is not the strongest, boom, we have the full scene. Uh, hopefully you all caught that. Papa had a, had a different process, however. Uh, first off, I started with the environment in Blender, to which I would render out and save the image as a PNG so it retains its high quality. I did do a few extra things in the in-between so that I can make sure that my images weren't blurry, because Blender does this thing that whenever you render out an image, it gets very grainy. And there are ways to do it, you just have to look them up on YouTube because I can't remember how to do it. I would have done more moving environments like the one in the first scene, however, this one scene, the, the down pan, took me... I think my computer three whole days to render. So yeah, or maybe it was like two days, but still it, it seemed like it took forever. So all but one scene are static. And after having the scene rendered, I drop the image into a sprite, divide its dimensions by four, copy paste it into a new document because to be honest, I don't want to get rid of the original. And then I lower the opacity and begin drawing and animating my character on a new layer. Now, unlike Zelda, where most of the animation was just rotated limbs filling in the blanks between keyframes, in this scene specifically, I did a skeleton or stick figure animation to assist me with the timing and location of the boy. I dropped the environment into the background in order to help me place the character in the scene so he could feel like he belongs. And after the framework for the character is done, I began animating the full version of the boy, adding shape, base color, small details like hair bounce to bring the character to life, and then shadows and lighting. After the core animation is done, I add small animations and details to the environment, such as the lava lamp and the PS2 cord in order to help blend the styles even more and help my character not be the only one in a different style. For the scenes with objects that obstruct some of these pixel details, I take the background image, separate the area that blocks the object I want to have the animation in by selecting it, copy pasting it into a new layer, and then I save it as part of the image that obstructs my object as a PNG so I can stick my pixel animations in between the new separated image and the background. This process is made much harder by moving animations, as made clear by the first shot when the camera pans down. I not only had to keyframe the lava lamp but the blanket as well, and unfortunately my computer kept slowing down to a crawl when I tried to preview it, so I did what I could. Once the animations and details are ironed out, I export all the animations and GIFs and then layer them into Premiere using the ancient technique of nesting, which is the same method I use for Zelda video as well. Soon after both animations are in and layered accordingly, I ensure they look good and sometimes add small changes to help them look better. And then I move into sound. This process unfortunately isn't discussed much for animators, at least in my experience of animating. Uh, but finding good sound effects and music to help your animations have a specific feel is difficult and to be honest, should never be something you slack on. The Zelda video was fairly easy to do, considering I had a ton of, you know, sound effects from actual games to help me along, and the music which belonged to multiple artists, who were credited respectively. However, Wapa took a little bit longer. I also wasn't sure if I wanted to go with the cartoon sound effects or more realistic sounds, uh, but ultimately went with realistic sounds to have more suspense. I was trying to utilize silence and some type of music to make tension in the video high, especially near the end. Uh, to be honest, I didn't exactly know what to do for the ambience during the scene where we see the boy lying in bed, but I figured if it would be focusing on the clock, why not make the clock ticking a recurring sound, which not only helped keep the scene ambient, but also added to the suspense near the end. Uh, for the clothes and slight movement, I wound up rubbing my shirt against the mic, and thus most of the scene sounded a bit more believable in my opinion, uh, even if you have to have your volume up on the highest thing to possibly hear them. I wish the final wapa at the end would have had more of a scare to it, and perhaps I needed a crescendo or maybe even a horror sting. Uh, but I was honestly okay with the final product, and considering this was my first horror animation, I was pretty pleased with what I was able to achieve with such a cartoony style. <sighs> well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Hopefully, that was informative. Uh, I, I kind of tried my hardest to kind of dive deeply into the things, but honestly, I'm going to be honest, there was a lot of stuff I did to kind of trick the eye or, you know, do whatever, and this isn't wasn't ever really intended to be like a full-blown tutorial. I just kind of wanted to skim the surface and and go a little bit behind the scenes of how some of these things were made and stuff like that but who knows um you know could be possibility in the near future 
wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But I do kind of want to talk about my goal for the next thing for our channel as well as some other stuff. It goes without saying that a lot of things that happen with the channel and the many people that are now part of it mean a lot to me. And I've honestly had this dream of having this channel and being at a place where I was comfortable and happy and had a community uh, for long before the conception of the actual channel itself. And honestly, after the Zelda video, I now know how, how possible it really is to kind of get more people uh, brought onto this channel. And I think that is kind of the next goal that I'm going for is just trying to get more people. So, you know, we have a bit of a community so that when future content does come out, not only are they seeing it, uh, but it's helping push our goals and hopefully getting me closer to being able to do something like the pixel art tutorial uh, series that I was talking about. And although I like to be at a point in time uh, with my art to where I could kind of let it work for me and I could utilize that as sort of a, a means of actual income because I'm going to be honest with you all, I like we're, we're not making any money on this channel. I think I've said it multiple times, but I, I just need to reiterate that we are not making anything. I don't care what those ads say on our Zelda video. That does not go to us. Um, is that we, we could really use the help. And the main reason why we're not getting any money is because we have not hit the prereqs that um, YouTube has set for us. Believe it or not, we actually need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. Now, I think we're well on our way to the 1,000 subscribers, but 400 watch hours, that, that scares me a little bit. And the reason why it does is because 4,000 is a lot of watch hours. I've gone over it and we are steadily getting more and more subscribers, which is a count that stays the same. It never like resets, but the 4,000 resets after like every 28 days. And even if we only have, even if we did have a thousand subscribers, that means that every person would have to watch four hours worth of content on our channel, which we do have. We have over four hours of content on our channel, thankfully, uh, but I can't, I don't know a lot of people that would want to sit through all of it in one sitting uh, just to help us get to that goal. But if you can help get us to a point to where we have over that amount of subscribers and over 4,000, I was rocking my brain for a little bit and I think I've come up with something that could be more incentivizing uh, than even a behind the scenes video. And what that is, is that I was thinking that if we are able to reach that goal of 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, I will drop an asset pack of everything from the Zelda video. Uh, not everything, but a majority of the things from the Zelda video. So this this includes the animations, environments, and the UI from the Zelda video. All character animations from Link, and even, even the controversial bearded Link, which once again only had like three animations. But everybody seems to have a problem with it. <clears throat> Townsfolk, enemies, horse head. Okay, I might not do horse head. But Dark Link is definitely going to be there as well. Even the cuckoo, cuckoo, <laughs> cuckoo. The bird, the bird and the, the, the thing, the townspeople, the NPCs and stuff like that. Uh, it'll also include all 10 environments, including the plains, the woods, cave, town, era house, wizard basement, desert dungeon, horse head chamber, and dark links room. Uh, the UI, including the HUD, uh, the level up screen, and the dialogue box. And uh, I mean, if y'all want this, the only thing we got to do is just get to 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. Easy enough, right? Like I said, we've got plenty of other videos on our channel. Uh, hopefully something there to wet your whistle. We don't just have Let's Plays, but we also have stupid music videos like uh, Down With The Goof, which, you know, is only like a 30 second video, so it's not even that long, but. Um, and then we also have our vlog, our retrograde reunion road trip, which we went on and we saw, uh, we went to the Blair Witch Woods and we also went to um, Centralia, which is the inspiration for Silent Hill. I think that's something. So yeah, we've got other content on there. And don't worry, we're going to be trying to add uh, more content, including more from the podcast, more from the Let's Plays. I have a review cooking right now uh, that I'm actually editing, and it's there's, it's a it's a chonky boy, let's just say that. So hopefully that'll catch a lot of people's eye as well when they see it pop up on the channel. And um, aside from all of these things, although the channel is a huge thing for me, a huge big piece of what I do outside of my, like, you know, full-time job. I'm also currently working on a graphic novel, one that I've had written for four years now, and I'm finally starting to revise it, get down the, you know, get down to brass tacks and really just start working on this thing. And my main goal, I know this is a huge goal of mine, but I want to have it done by the end of the year, which is 
hefty. I've never really worked on a comic like that. I, I worked on a Webtoons once upon a time, but this is going to be like a full-fledged comic. I'm not even sure how I'm going to get it out to the public, but um, I'm going to be working on it, and it's going to be part of something, so I can't guarantee that we're going to be posting every single week and stuff like that because I, currently, I, as it stands, I am the main editor, and so there's a lot that falls on my shoulders in all that regard. And uh, I'm trying to kind of like work my way through it, but there's a lot. And um, yeah, so, but, but one way or another, I'm going to try my hardest. I'm going to try and deliver the content so we can get to that 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in a timely manner. And that is all I wanted to talk about. There is not a single, there's not anything else that I want to talk about. I think that's it. So yeah. Uh, like I said, hope you all enjoyed the video. I look forward to the thousand subscribers video when I'm dropping the pack and talking about my next big goal. And uh, hopefully all on the in-between, you enjoy the videos that we release and curate specifically for everybody here. And uh, tell your friends, share, like it, tell, tell, tell them to subscribe, you know? Just do it, because you know you want to. Um, that's, that's all I got to say today. So uh, peace, peace, peace out.